Hey, what is going on everybody? Boylon here, and in today's video we have a little bit of spicy data mines to cover. Uh, we finally have a little bit more knowledge about what's to come for Pocket Dimension numero 3. Uh, <laughs> I was about to say a different language, I don't know it. Anyways, so we know that there's going to be a new trade coming, and I want to talk about some of the characters that I think are going to be on this list. So it's going to be a little bit of data mines plus a uh, fantasy football Marvel Strike Force style and see how many of these that I actually end up getting right. And I think that the question is is whether or not we see it in the blog post tomorrow as the official characters listed or if we're going to be waiting until sometime next week when they patch it in uh, because they did say just to let people know that Pocket Dimension is going to be coming around before the end of the month. And really at that point that means by next Wednesday because next Wednesday is the 31st of August so it's gonna be coming up pretty soon it might go live on like Monday or Tuesday realistically because then pocket dimension lasts for five days I think so it will run into the start of September as well so uh, let's get started you guys know what to do let's boil this down So we're going to start here, of course, which is in the data mine section. And so we have a little bit more information regarding that. We know that Brawn is now going to be a milestone event. Now, how what exactly that entails, we don't know yet. Just to recap, by the way, the first week of September, well, maybe not first week of September, the first week of Abominations event is going to be the Stark R&D milestone. And that has to do with gold spending. Now, some of you guys might remember that. I believe there was power cores in there as well. It's further up in the data mines. I talked about it in a previous video. Uh, so that's what's going to be coming for week one. Week two is going to be this power of attorney milestone event, which is where you get one of the items as well. You can see it here in perfect serum for the Stark R&D milestone event. And then the irradiated blood, which is another item for the power of attorney milestone event. That's the She-Hulk costume event. And then we're going to get the Reptoid Fin, which is... Uh, going to be for the Brawn Milestone event in there as well. Now, I thought this was supposed to be a different item because I'm almost certain in the previous uh, data mines it actually said Bone Spikes. And that's what I had listed in my... Uh, I created a new September a new September uh, Milestone sheet for this one and it said Bone Spikes. But I guess now that's changed to Reptoid Fin. And then there's Indestructible Pants, which is going to be a Spider Weaver milestone event whatever that happens to be place your guesses in the comments down below that would be week four or week four of the uh, abomination event spider weaver have no idea like extra shards for web warriors that you know we're already getting i don't know whatever so i also want to talk about the quick rumbles there's going to be so there was something listed in here called vigilant have no idea what this is unless you, this isn't actually related to pocket dimension either so i'm not sure what this is about there is Hand, <laughs> Quick Rumble Blitz for Hand, Shield, Ravagers, and Weapon X down here. And we also have some information about Echo possibly going to the War Store. I say possibly because you never know in this game that, you know, things, even the data mines still could be subject to change. And when we had information about Ghost Spider going into, uh, was Doom War 4 9, that ended up not being the case so take this with a bit of grain of salt that being said if you guys remember i did a polling about uh, farmability and actually in discord people voted on echo the most as the most likely next character so if that's the case that the discordies won congratulations and then we also have something here this is for pocket dimension as well which is going to be featuring ghost spider and like, like we need any more shards for Ghost Spider. She's already in the arena store and we're still getting her in the raid season milestone. But hey -o, uh, you do need to be level 65 uh, just to be clear about that one. And fully crafted gear as well. So you guys know the drill if you've done Pocket Dimension before. It has been some time. But it does mention characters with the limited time. Heavy Metal Trait. And I want to talk about this specifically in relation to Pocket Dimension 1 and 2 and what characters have already been out because they never reuse the same characters. I doubt they're going to do that for 3, so we can kind of cut out a lot of characters that have already been used in previous Pocket Dimensions. We're going to talk about that in a second. Uh, but also we have Doctor Voodoo coming at some stage, probably in September, uh, for Mystic 1-6, replacing Hand Sentry, who's going to go into the Arena Store for 250 credits. So again, two characters that... One character that we could possibly use in terms of uh, Echo because she was a really bad event and for newer players who need to get her unlocked for Young Avengers, uh, that, that should be good for them. But it looks like we're bypassing the Eternals, 
no surprise, but if you guys remember that blog post from May, looks like it's not happening, that they're not actually going to make the Eternals farmable yet. No surprise, really. And Dr. Voodoo isn't really a character that you need at this stage because he's also, he, he was in a strike pass or, or whatever in a pass of some sort, uh, so he was available there if you need him. And then I want to talk about the characters that have been available in Pocket Dimension. So these are the characters that probably, and I'm going to blow this up a little bit here, characters that you won't see in Pocket Dimension 3 because they've already been used. And so we had three legendaries in each of them. So I, I'm going to have a list at the very bottom, and that's going to be my Fantasy Football Pocket Dimension 3 list, and see how many of those are actually right when we figure them all out. So Shuri, Omega Red, and Star-Lord were available in Pocket Dimension 1. Nick Fury, Magneto, and Black Bolt were in Pocket Dimension 2. So that's six legendaries out of, I don't know how many there are now. And you, just saying it right now, I highly doubt there's going to be any Horseman characters on there because they're too overpowered. Uh, we also had Cersei, who was a very strong character in PD1. We had Scarlet Spider because that was his event. And then we had Miles. So I've kind of separated this sort of by um, meta-ness. So the ones and the twos denote which pocket dimension that was. Kate Bishop was in two. Iceman was in two. Ghost Rider, Morbius, Scarlet Witch, and Evil Stranger in two. I put, I lumped them together because there was a little bit of synergy going on there with uh, the supernatural trait, and then uh, these two with Dark Hold, and then these two with uh, Dark Hunters, and, and these three sort of together. Anyways, uh, we had Storm, Red Skull, Yondu, Magic, Multiple Man, Misty Knight, Groot Strange, Regular Strange, Black Panther, and She-Hulk in Pocket Dimension One. Now, uh, I've lumped them here because they were kind of uh, low-key garbage, I think, uh, for that event. I didn't really use any of these, frankly. Uh, and for number two, we had Night Nurse, Mysterio Cable, Black Widow, Mystique, Ultimus, Yo-Yo, Korath, and Shocker. What's important here is that Black Widow, Yo-Yo, and Nick Fury had synergy together, and then Mystique and Magneto, although they weren't super great. Uh, and then out of the out of all of them, if you had Night Nurse build, that was probably the best one there. And so the reason why I've had them all listed out is because these aren't probably going to be on the list for number three. Uh, what I do expect, though, is that there's going to be at least one or two support options. Because often there, there isn't very many options when it comes to support or healing. So for Pocket Dimension 2, we had Night Nurse and I don't know, like, I don't even know if Scarlet Witch counts. And Nick Fury. It was very, very, very... And Nick Fury barely counts either. It's very, very limited. Whereas in, in Pocket Dimension 1, we had Shuri. And, like, if you ran Cersei as a healer, ISO, maybe. You know, there wasn't really much there either. So, I've kind of had that in mind that for my choices for Pocket Dimension 3, it's going to be quite limited. Uh, probably one or two healer characters. Uh, agree or disagree, let me know in the comments down below, and we're going to get to that now. So, Hulkbuster, number one. Why? Because he's still ongoing, and some people may not unlock him. When we previously had Pocket Dimension, we had Scarlet Spider for Pocket Dimension 1, and we had Evil Strange for Pocket Dimension 2. And when I made the video, do I still have it up? I made this video, which was this one? That, yeah, 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 this one. No, this one, sorry. Uh, this video here, it was uh, Best Characters for Pocket Dimension 2, Alternate Disciple Choices. I didn't even have... Uh, Evil Strange unlocked at the time when I did this video. So that suggests to me that you can see that here. That that suggests to me that there's going to be a rare character on this list, and that's going to be Hulkbuster, I think. And then for the legendaries, I've decided on Iron Man because at most there's usually synergy with one or two other characters, no more than that, because they don't want to over synergize, otherwise it makes it too easy. So I'm saying Hulkbuster and Iron Man. Now that alone, probably if you've built the Bionic Avengers, that's probably enough to get you through it. Uh, you know, for the most part. Hulkbuster's abilities do actually work outside of Bionic Avengers. The barrier, I believe, it just doesn't give as much to non-Bionic Avengers, but it still does work. And there's some pretty good synergy here, and there's some taunting, and there's a tank, and that's good. Uh, next up is Doc Ock and Silver Surfer. Now, Doc Ock is a legendary, so that's legendary number two, and he's a support character. So he does offer that regeneration to the team that it's not like pure healing, but that's, you know, they, they don't want to give you too much healing to get you through this. I think and not everyone builds Doc Ock now either. And if you're a newer mid game player, you might not have him either. Like I do because I used him, you know, going up the way, but I, but most people don't do it now. Silver Surfer is a weird one because he's still a really good character. He's a really good character. However, um, his meta-ness is not as high up there, but as far as the meta-ness in the list, 
I think is still useful. I used him quite a bit in uh, the Gambit raid. I believe he came back, he resurfaced there, and I used him quite a bit there, and I made some good use out of him. Uh, some people may still be using him in the early game. My baby account's actually still using uh, Silver Surfer as well, so that's possible there. And then we have Thor. Uh, part of this is I'm thinking about the trait, the heavy metal trait. I'm thinking Mjolnir the hammer, uh, but he's just there standalone. However, there is still some wave one synergy with Iron Man. So loose synergy there, uh, but he can still trigger his passive off of Iron Man getting hit. Uh, and then we have Silver Samurai again because of that heavy metal trait. And then you'll see further down that I have someone related to Silver Samurai. And this is the less meta list that's like, okay, you know, they're usable maybe. Colossus, again, heavy metal, right? Spider Punk. Now that's listed because I don't know. I, I I know it's punk music, but I but he's got a guitar. Maybe Scopely sometimes goes like really left field when it comes to their picks. And Spider Punk is actually pretty shit standalone. So I wouldn't use him, but I wouldn't be surprised if he's on that list. Uh, we have Ghost. Uh, I had to choose some characters. I was going through my roster and my power of my characters, and I was like, who's been left behind a little bit? Ghost hasn't been touched in a little while, and so I, I feel like they're going to give us... About half of the list is going to be shit. Because if you remember from up here, like, nobody really used a lot of these characters up here. Some people might have used Yo-Yo. Like, look at all look at this list from Pocket Dimension 1. Like, I doubt anyone... Maybe, some people might have used Misty Knight. Some people might have used Multiple Man. But aside from that, most of these were pretty shit at the time. So, you know, that's what I'm thinking for Pocket Dimension 3 is, like, there's going to be, like, these top tier characters, which is like this, and then there's going to be a couple usable ones in here, like Wolverine, who I've thrown in there as well, to be, uh, you know, partial synergy, well, actually, synergy with Silver Samurai. I don't know how much he gives to Silver Samurai necessarily, but, hey, it's the same team, right? And Ultron, because Ultron is not somebody that new players level up now, but... He is someone that veterans have, so that is an option for veterans, and actually he's got some crazy ass bots that might be worth using on some of the harder levels, and so you could fill that in too. He's a tech character. Um, I didn't want to add Envision or anyone like that in here because I felt that that would be too strong for spawn defense up with tech characters, and since I've already added in quite a few tech characters, I didn't think that was going to happen. And for the third legendary, we have Ebony Maw, and also the reason why Ultron was on the list was because he was, a, I call him a pseudo legendary, because... Dark Dimension, basically, and Ultimus was previously on the list as well, although he was not a pseudo-legendary, I just wanted to throw that out there. Ebony Maw, though, he's kind of been left behind as well, and so I had to choose three legendaries. And I, I was thinking about Jubilee or Phoenix, but honestly, I think Jubilee would have been too generous. I think that would have been too easy of a pick, and because of the blinds and whatnot, and the debuffs are very strong. Phoenix, I don't know, I didn't add on the list. I put Ebony Maw... I'm not 100% confident in that one, uh, but uh, you know a lot of these I am actually confident that they will show up, especially Hulkbuster and Iron Man. Pretty confident that they're probably going to show up, and I wouldn't be surprised if Doc Ock is either. So Ebony Maw is just on there as a potential support as well. He doesn't really heal the team outside of Black Order that much. He has the drain, I guess, but outside of that, it, it doesn't. You, you give him a healer ISO, I guess, and, and that might work out. But otherwise, nothing too crazy there. And then we got the shitty characters. So we got Rescue. I guess there's some synergy with Rescue and Iron Man. Didn't really think about that when I listed it. Juggernaut. No no real synergy there. Um, heavy Metal, maybe just because of his armor. War Machine. Uh, more, more power armor. I didn't think about that either. But War Machine's kind of crap. So if you were using War Machine, Rescue, and Iron Man... Like, the, mo the majority of it's going to come from Iron Man, right? Like, these characters are still pretty terrible. You probably don't have them geared up. Uh, Polaris and Graviton rounds out the list at the bottom. So these are just kind of random additions. Uh, I, I thought about it because Magneto was previously in there, and then Polaris is like his daughter. I thought maybe for Pocket Dimension 3, they just might do that randomly. Uh, they haven't used any X-Factor characters other than Multiple Man. So I honestly, sometimes they just put in random characters. And so that's why I put it there. Graviton, I don't know. Just, just came to mind when I was cycling through my roster. So let me know what you think in the comments down below, guys. How many of these do you think are going to make the list? Honestly, I actually think about at least... I have to be at least half right. You know, I have a suspicion that, you know, if they want to take this seriously, at least a couple of these in the top list here are going to be in there. And honestly, I think Colossus will probably be in there as well. I wouldn't be surprised if a few others are in here as well. Ultron maybe as well if they want to be a little bit generous for veterans. Although I know other players do not. So let me know your choices in the... If I, if I have something or if you have something that I don't have, 
please feel free to list them in the comments down below because I'd love to hear your thoughts and then we'll actually we'll compare this to when we get the official list because I want to see what my prediction skills are like when it comes to events so uh, that's it enjoy your evening and until next time stay safe and healthy and I'll see y'all later Boylan signing out